Hi there, today we're going to go over the routine projections of the C-spine, so follow me. Hi there, Brent. Hi. My name is Sarah. I'm just going to bring you into uh, the x-ray room to do some procedures here. Perfect. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Okay, so uh, I just have to ask you a couple questions before we get started. So if you could please tell me your full name and your date of birth. Yeah, Brent McMillan, August 11, 1976. Okay, and what brings you in here today? Uh, just basically been having trouble turning, turning my head. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, several x-rays of your neck with you standing. Um, what I'll get you to do is actually just start off over at the wall stand here. Okay. If that's okay with you. Yeah. And I might have to place my hands to help adjust your body position. Are you okay with that? Yep. Okay. So first we'll just start with your left side against the board. You're going to be facing me. And just watch. There's going to be a lead apron really close to you here. I just don't want you to um, run into that. Okay, so on the x-ray tube here, I'm just going to change it to approximately a 10 by 12 inch collimation, roughly, and then I'll adjust for Brent as needed. Uh, Brent will also uh, get you to take your glasses off. Thanks very much. We're going to leave your mask on for now. Um, yeah, that's good. You can just relax for a minute. So what I'll get you to do is actually just get yourself so that you're nice and close to the board here. I'll get you to step forward ever so slightly, tiny, tiny little bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm going to adjust the x-ray tube position just so that the central ray is passing through the level of C4, right in the middle of the spine. And I want to check to make sure the collimation is right about the top of the ear attachment, so the cella turcica is showing up on the image. And I also just want to double check the spine is processed at the level of C7. It's not going to be cut off on the image here, so it looks really good. Okay, and then I'll just place my left marker right in the collimation anteriorly. And Brent, will just get you to relax your shoulders down as best as you can there and just keep your chin up a little bit for me. Okay, that looks great. Just hold nice and still. Okay, Brent, so I'll just get you to breathe in, breathe out, relax your shoulders, hold nice and still. Okay, you can breathe. And just um, move aside for a second. I'm going to just adjust the position of the x-ray tube there. Okay, Brent. So I'll get you to put your back against the board this time. And I'm going to add a about a 15 to 20 degree beam angle just to align better with the intervertebral disc spaces of the spine and just watch the board's going to move up behind you there okay, okay. Just be careful there might be a light close to your eyes So for this AP axial projection, I just want to make sure that the central ray is still passing through the level of C4. You can have a look anteriorly on the patient. Uh, if they're wearing a gown, you'll be able to see um, the jugular notch would be the level of T23, so I don't want my collimation to go too much lower than that. And then superiorly, I also want to make sure the collimation is just passing through around the level of the EAM, and I'll just place a marker with tight collimation just to the soft tissue margins. That's really good. Yeah, and your chin looks okay like that. So I just want you to hold nice and still for me again. Okay, Brent, you can hold your breath. Beep. Okay, breathe normally. Okay, so for the next two projections we're going to do, I'll get you to actually turn all the way around for me. And now because I've turned Brent into a PA position, I'm actually going to change the direction of my beam angle as well. So now I'm going to move into about a 15 to 20 degree caudad beam angle. 
And this will be the optimal angulation to show the intervertebral foramina once I get Brent into a anterior oblique position. So the collimation and the centering will be similar to the AP axial with the central ray passing through the level of C4. I'm also going to place two markers and they're both going to be pronated for this one. I'll just get you to step aside for me a second there, Brent. Thanks very much. Okay. okay. And step right up in front of the board again. And if you wouldn't mind just rotating your body towards the right side there. So your right shoulder is in contact with the image receptor, about a 45 degree position. And you actually have the option, depending on the site preference, to keep the head in an oblique position or turn the head into a lateral position. And I'll just check my collimation on both sides. So I'm just going to shift you a little bit forward. That's good. You okay there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to hold nice and still. Beep. And just relax. We're going to do one more very similar to this one. This time I'm going to get you to rotate your body so that your left shoulder is in contact with the image receptor. That's really good. And I'll just double check my collimation and the patient position. I shouldn't really have to change anything because this uh, setup is almost exactly the same. Except this time I'm in, uh, Brent's going to be in an LAO position, left anterior oblique. That's good, right there. Okay. You're going to hold nice and still for me again. Okay. Um, beep. Okay, Brent, you can relax. The x ray tube is going to move again, so just be careful. And I'll just get you to shift aside. I'll grab my x-ray markers here. Thank you very much. Now I'll get you to put your back against the board again, if that's okay with you. Oops, sorry about that. There's some the light there. I'll just change it up for you. Okay, so this last projection is actually going to show the upper vertebrae that we, we're going to look through through your open mouth. So if it's okay with you, I just get you to lower your mask or, or perhaps just take it off. Okay. I'm just going to have a look to make sure you're right in the middle. So if possible, get you to shift a little too much there. Let me help you out. Just like that, just so you're right in the mid-sagittal plane. And I'll have a look at the alignment here of your um, upper incisors to your mastoid tips. And that actually looks pretty good. So if, if you can, Brian, I'm going to get you to drop your jaw without changing your head position as wide as you can there. I'm just going to place my marker on here. Collimate just a little bit there. I'm just going to shift you over slightly. That's good. Okay, I want you to keep nice and still as best as you can. Okay, and if you could say ah for me. Okay, relax. You can relax your mouth, put your mask back on. Thank you. Okay, Brent, we're all done today. Uh, so your doctor should get the results within a couple business days. Do you have any questions for me before you go? No. Okay, have a nice day. Excellent, thank you very much. Hi there. A moment ago, we just went over the routine projections of the C-spine on an ambulatory patient. Now I'm going to go over the lateral projection for a patient who's in a trauma situation. So in this case, the patient will be coming to you on a stretcher with a C-spine collar on. In this situation, it's critical that you start with the lateral projection first because you don't have to move the patient at all to take this image. So I'm going to go through this uh, lateral projection setup for you. On the control panel, the settings are the same. We're still going to use the wall stand. 
with a longer SID with lateral selected. Technical factors are the same. And I just have the patient in the room waiting already on the stretcher, so follow me. Hi there, Brent. I'm just lowering the side rails here, so just be careful. So this first picture I'm gonna take is, uh, I'm gonna show a side view of your neck. And have a look at my collimated field here and I want to make sure I'm centered through the level of C4 again the top of the ear at the image and centered through the level of the mid coronal plane so the best way to do that you'll adjust your wall Bucky and in this room the tube follows me you'll see a little bit of collimation just past the soft tissue margin or the, the collar itself uh, anteriorly and then I'm going to place my marker. If I had an arrow, I could also place an arrow pointing towards the ceiling, or I can also annotate the word cross table or horizontal beam on the image afterwards. So I'm not going to be able to move Brent's neck because he's wearing a collar, but what I will do is try to get you just to relax your shoulders down as best as you can. It's very good. And you're going to hold nice and still for me, Brent. I'm just going to give you a lead shield here. Okay, Brent, so once again, I'll get you just to breathe out and try to keep your shoulders relaxed. Beep. Okay, you can breathe normally. I'm just going to finish off with one more image here. This one's called a swimmer's projection, just to help separate uh, your shoulders on the image so we could see the vertebrae in that, that region there. So Brent, if you're able to, I'll get you to raise your left arm right above your head. As best as you can, you okay like that? Okay, mm -hmm. don't have any issues with your shoulder there. And the other thing I could do is just ever so slightly tilt the stretcher, just about five degrees or so, just to help bring that left shoulder up a little bit and the right shoulder down, just ever so slightly, especially if it's difficult to see through that shoulder region. And I'll just readjust the centering so I'm closer to the level of the uh, C7, T1 joint space. Kay. And just try as best as you can to hold nice and still for me there. Okay. Beep. Okay, just relax your arms down, Brent. <laughs> 